Wait, we have War Within coming out tomorrow. What? I didn't know. Oh, guys, I didn't know War Within was coming out tomorrow, okay? Wait, it's coming out tomorrow? We'll check it out right now, though. Here we go. Everything you need to know about the War Within WoW cast. Oh, shit, buckle in. Grab your popcorns, take a seat. Sip some water, Jet. It's time for WoW cast. I love WoW cast. Can we get five likes in this video? Hey, everyone. Welcome to WoW cast. Hi. Today, we're going to talk about the War Within, which alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ian, game director on WoW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WoW. <gasps> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about This is my first time before? seeing an Asian person on WoW. Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to well-known video game World They're of actually Warcraft. going diverse. But even, I think, more special to us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Um, so as you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens not just you know, ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. So this character has been everywhere for The War Within. I kind of want our, I kind of want an expansion where we just keep losing. I think that'll be cool. We never did. We have that chat. I guess Shadowland we were losing, but we really didn't. I want an expansion where we're just getting fucked, dude. And then the next expansion is like, boom, the hero arc. That'd be sick. Zelatath. She's purple. She's amazing. Can you tell us more about her? Yeah, Zelatath is uh, you know one of our key villains of the world. Yo, I saw a model of her. She looks cool, man. The expansion is she like has part like a of this, cloak this journey, uh, delving like deeper, sh find Zalatath like on her the side. allies, Sorry, and uh, the inspiration of uh, her Sam design from the other side was really based on the uh, priest artifact That's weapon cool. that she had been trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs, That's a like badass belt, cloak. I, I wish players could get something like this so too. Really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, uh, those are a homage to Nazoth, who freed her from the dagger. Ah, uh, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down, yeah, why walk away from that? the talking dagger, and so then we'll be here. Oh my and yet... Um, are there any other familiar faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are uh, Illyria uh, and Anduin. So these two, they... Chat, I liked Illyria since Warcraft 2, okay? I'm very proud of it. Warcraft 1, Warcraft they're, they're 2. They're right, from some of the wounds She of was the past, first female character in, in that end, game. they're going to find hope and redemption. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her She's really cool. design that really reflects the duality of Sorry. her character. And Anduin, uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know... Okay, I mean, dude, they should have gave him a bigger chin for the sake of, you know, online community. If they gave him a bigger chin, dude, he would have been like, he should have been mewing, man. He's, he's been through a lot lately. He looks cool sure. still. He still looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one. I think his chin should have been a little bit more layers like... Layers to it, right? Obviously, we're literally delving know, beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. But this is also a story that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. And with the War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The, the new zones in WoW, it looks pretty. They do a good job with it, the environment design. The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the Earth, right, isn't, we're calling Khazalgar. Okay. This is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. You know, just okay. a couple hundred nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing, varied settings. Yeah, wow. That's our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of earthen there. And so they have their awesome city, Dornagal, which we're very excited <gasps> Yo, I have a crazy idea, chat. What if, remember when I said the heroes, we need like an expansion where we lose? What, we, what if we like just get fucked and fucked and fucked and we get blasted 
by Shadow Priest God, and our character gets shattered. Like, shattered. And then you start from level one, and it's new <laughs> talents, <laughs> shortened abilities, no dirty buttons, make it, you know, a little bit tighter, and then plunder storm style. Like, you gotta aim a little bit, no add ons. What are we thinking, chat? What are we thinking? Little bit of skill shot and tap target hybrid style. Reactionary. I almost want to say ugh, th th this one's a hard one for a while people to consume, okay? I don't know if you rate it in Lost Ark. I know Lost Ark has bad. Uh, but the raids are fucking fun, dude. The raids are fun. And there is no like real healer. They're like supportive healers where they do like tiny shield or like tiny heals. And then they are all going to the raid, for example, with eight potions. And if they drink all the potions, you're fucking dead. And there's no healer. Dude, that would be so cool, man. I would love that mode. I know, I know this is going to cause a lot of problems here. I know, I know, I know. I, I just want MMO healers to be more like a support role than just tunnel healing. I guess in retail, you do damage and healing, but I feel like healing is still too big. And PvP healing, it just doesn't. Anyway, I'm going on a weird direction here. Let's unpause and watch. For players to check out, that'll be the hub in the end. Uh, the second zone is the ringing deeps. So, you know, the yeah, like a hard reset. That would be sick. Mind picks, industry. And so this is the heart of Dude, the industry. This looks so cool. But it's not all just, you know, lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, cenotes with uh, light and water coming in, creating these uh, you know, lush spaces for the players to enjoy. But you yeah. can dragon riding with that? No, dude, that's and, so uh, we cool, We go man. to Hallafall. Hallafall is where... Yeah, Retail Wow is winning in my book chat. Right, oh one, my, look at this. Airships. Right, underground airships, right? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate, like, this shot. These are pretty. Oh, the video died. Is this Shadow? What, what, what is going on in the sky? I'm kind of getting PS, PTSD here. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface how are they going to get around well airships of course of course <laughs> and then our final zone is ashkahet so this is the heart of the nerubian empire oh! this is where we'll finally be able to see the nerubians and damn all this i always liked the nerubians glory, this like, is cool the of their civilization i think uh, we'll get into the details of alpha later that's so cool this journey is going to start in the isle of dorne but I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. And okay. I think the, you know, Tina mentioned that this crystal, it is such a striking visual element that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place deep within the earth, a radiant crystal of light and the way, you know, as it okay. illuminates the surroundings that Holy actually moly. plays with the environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts oh, to it. Oh, I like it. the Zeppelin and too. I think when we set out to create this underground space, we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive, that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where, honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you. Like, can you do this in retail right now, chat? It doesn't feel where like you get to fly. Ground. It feels like you could be outdoors in some vast volcano. No, area okay. What the? Just, it's incredibly. What happening. the seagull? When we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're going to see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some, you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in in the Alpha on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive, and really is the scars okay. of an initial Dranai? battle that seems like it didn't end so well. Um, and the is that beginning Dranai of or our journey, as, as, many, as with many is expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation. It, did that look like the Dranai stone? Did you see the new Dranai, the, what do you call it? The heritage armor? They have like a little crystal and it goes like, Chrono Kai Crystal. Dude, it looks like, it looks like that the purple shit. Um, okay, I can see the Dalaran the too. Though. Of our journey, as, as many nobody cares about them anymore. Is a the bit Dranis of a mystery, cool, a bit of an man. investigation of of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months. 
but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins. What? Did they look cool? Did the female looks cool? On the doorstep of these ancient I usually, people. Actually, I we're like to begin, you know, I don't like playing helping us though. figure out where to go next. They're going to become our next allied race too, right? Yo, they look What is this gear? Did that one shoulder pad has more pixels than ZG in Classic WoW? Once we are in their trust, that's look at look at how clean is that is. Is there any other NPCs that we're gonna be familiar with? Oh, yeah, they're gonna be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while. That's that will badass. be, you know, part of this story. Uh, that's because of their, you know, oh yo, take that guy out of here. Jen, you know, Magni. Actually, I, I missed him a little bit, guys. I missed him. There's the Radiant Song. He brings some of his family members along. Oh yes, his family. Uh, Moira, oh, who is. Yeah. Leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves. Dude, Guzu loves dwarves and he loves this hairstyle. This was the first character I saw when I met Guzu. He was wankaging to the dwarves, man. To Iron Forge. I hate, I think he has an emo still. Guzu. Dude, look at that. Look at that. This man loves dwarves. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Dagran, who is now a young adult. <laughs> Oh, yo, what? I've never seen a hairless dwarf. What is this? I guess he's young. It shows. Old. Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But okay. now, uh, you know, the dark iron heritage is starting to show more in his appearance. Never mind. Along with his personality, <laughs> so he has a bunch of these scrolls and books, like really showing that he has a very scholarly nature. <laughs> I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of characters and champions and heroes and, and you know backup characters, and whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are, the first question we ask is, who needs to be here? Who does it make okay. sense to have answer this call, want to step forward? Just as when we were dealing with, you know, the Green Dragon Flight or the Emerald Dream or or the like. Okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves to take center stage. All right, so let's talk about the eight new dungeons in the War Within. What are your guys' favorites or the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players Dude, are going to see badass. in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. The Rookery is the place where... Dude, I like all the con Dude, I like all the designs. Where they look great. The storm griffins were raised and they look good, right? Is is it is it because I've been looking at classic wild too much, or every every angle looks good? Trained by the ancient earthen over over the centuries. Um, you know, dwarves. And Dude, she does have the insane man, posture, Fallon. You're right. I need to of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of. If you, you know, got the war within heroic edition, you might have been flying around on that guy. There's plenty more where that came from in the Isle of Dorne. And so and this dungeon, of course, is not all peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted earth and known okay. as the Skarden. And we're going to be on just beginning Yo, to understand they look cool than the good guys. from what their nature is as we fight through it. They look cool. But one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing. That's terrible. Well, fortunately, in 1025, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. And we're really happy to bring that to the level up dungeons in War Within right from the outset. So that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon if that's what you prefer. Or of course you can just queue up with regular with, with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that we couldn't in the past in ways that at times was frankly awkward because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance in a zone, but we couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in Hallowfall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this Erethor monastery. Ooh. So uh, one of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames Ooh. the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling of Hallowfall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room, Ooh. as well as just how it ties in with the narrative of the story as a whole. 
And another really cool one, it's the City of Threads. So this one is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the newer civilization Damn, has built on top of. I like that Vito. And just to think and about the, the layers style. of Nerubian history that, you know, is in this land. Is it that the, na the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even far before oh, that even. even. Before that? Yeah, the Nerubians, I think, you know, we, we might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They're one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth, right up there with wow. the you know elves and trolls and the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only really seen hints of them, going back to, to Wrath, if you ran the Azjol Nerub or Ankehet dungeons, you could see, you know, their mm -hmm. buildings off in the, in the background. But, you know, they were a civilization that at its height rivaled the High Elves Wrath. and the Nightborn on the surface. That's insane. They were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lich King's armies and win until the Old Gods and you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. One of the things we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could never you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to turn Why on the arachnophobia crab? filter and all uh, spider beasts <laughs> what? will turn into crabs. So very pumped about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it actually looks, it, it, it works way better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't... <laughs> What? To, you know, be able to jump in, turn it on, and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable. Yo, I know this is funny, but my older brother had a friend where he invited someone to play WoW with him, and there were spiders, and he and uninstalled the game. Like he's afraid of giant spiders, I guess. I guess a lot of people have them. Parts of our world. You know, this is something that that's when we funny. announced the Nerubian centric themes of war within it's so it's random seeing crabs there though trepidation from portions of our community who love wow but were worried they weren't going to be able to experience it honestly prior to that it's something we heard concerns about from within our own team where there are you know people who genuinely felt uncomfortable with these elements of the game that we were building together and so we set out to try to find a solution that would still you know preserve the fidelity of the game but really make it more approachable more accessible to everyone so speaking of the Nerubians, once we reach level 80, we're going to go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Uh, is there anything you want to speak about that? Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, show piece uh, that is just in front of the Queen's Palace. Damn. It represents the Nerubian race, and it just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. This raid will get one of the sections of the Level video. 80? Chat, oh, yo, right now, they said they have three expansions, right? War Within, something and something. So 80, 90, 100 again? Yo, I'll clip this right now. I'll gift 100 subs if they don't do this. The next one after this, 80, 90, 100, right here, the heroes are going to get fucking blasted. Boom, and we're going to shatter. Shatter, the million pieces go around Azeroth, and now you got to collect these fragments. And we start from level one, boom. Like we're, we're like in a dream capture state. And then uh, we start from one. It's going to be one through 60, kind of like a little relaunch of uh, Classic WoW. They're doing the whole thing again, but in a different timeline because we got shattered into like a million pieces. And now we got to go find these like shattered pieces. Holy shit. And we start from level one with new engine, new WoW graphic. Holy shit. Owen Forest and a new graphic, new Goldshire for all the ERPers. Holy shit. And then we're going to have WoW housing. Yo. This is going to happen, chat. It's going to happen, all right. 100 gift of subs. I mean, they have to. We can't keep going 110, 120 and be like, all right, guys, it's time to do a squish. All right, all right, level 60. Okay, next expansion, 70 again. Dude, they can't keep doing this. They can't keep doing this, right? to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where, you know, only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go and you really Thank get you, to Arch. explore the dark elegance of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, like the Nerubians, Ooh, you did look to, cool. remember they're an the advanced heck? race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and what going into that city and that palace felt like. We really want to show 
the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower like that, of Azeroth promise. that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built to showcase some vertical elements and, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web while locked in combat against the queen? Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see that up for testing. Does that mean we're going to get tier sets again? Certainly. I think well, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the street. New tier <laughs> means new yeah, they took it away and people got mad. Or I think classic relaunch happened and then people got that FOMO and wanted tier sets back. Tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike years and years ago when you only had, when you had to raid in order to get the tier set, now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raid. Unlike years. I don't know what it is like. When I see the art, just the sketch of the design, it looks fucking badass. But when they're fitted on the players, some of them look goofy. Like this, it, the armor looks cool, but something doesn't like fit, man. I wonder if they should almost, you know, make this just black here, you know? And I think that could look cooler, just like dark. Or maybe even like a white glow, since the white glow, you know, like... Actually, the eye wouldn't pop off then. Unless they did the black eye in here. I, I feel like they shouldn't show the the nose and whatnot. It looks, it looks silly. Or make it tighter. Like tighter. Like, like you know. Like, oh shit. Hold. Am I overcooking? Here means new tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike years and years ago, when you only they look cool, it just looks goofy. I don't know. Set, I don't know what it is. Now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, mythic plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes now delves. Ah, delves. Let's get. Let's start talking about delves. Yeah, I mean, delves are one of the major new features in War Within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more structured progression yeah, there's one more thing i want to mention it, dude I, I need to like clip this and send it to blizzard okay ready when you put on a fucking pirate hat and wow your hair just disappears it looks so bad or if you put on um the santa hat every wild player can agree with me your hair disappears and you're just fucking bald it, it, nothing wrong with bald but it, this just looks weird man it looks so bad and this has been in WoW forever. Um, FF or Lost Ark, if you put in a hat, they give you like one hairstyle to go off with, right? I, I think just do that, man. Just give us one hairstyle. If you put it on, your hairstyle just goes into that default. Because the, the bald thing looks so bad and it's so outdated. It's so outdated. Am I right? Look. WoW Santa hat. I'm, I'm speaking about this because I, I played Plunder recently and my guy has a cool hair, but he just goes bold. I, I think on male it looks fine. But on, on females, like, they always just go bold. Yeah, they're just bold. Like, your hair's just gone. Like, your, your hair's gone, man. Like, give us a little bit, you know? Like, this too. You should have a little bit of hair come out. Fuck it, hire me, I'll do it. I'll learn with M. Bonnie and send it home. Extension of the outdoor world gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And, you know, delves are these seamless experiences. I know these are little things, but the little things like add up, you know? Integrated into all I, I of I think it's zones, good to fix. Where you can have these localized Makes the game look better. adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards just through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. Damn, he looks yeah, we'll cool. Be able to get it from the Great Wall, I like that right? armor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, super exciting. 
So one of our goals with Building Delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. You, when you walk up to the Delve, there's this, you know, Ooh. dark, misty door and you click on it and then it just disappears. Yeah, and I like that aesthetic too. you just walk into your own personal Delve instance. So very excited about that. I mean, players are going to see, have that first experience on the Isle of Dorne early in the Alpha. Uh, the first Delve they're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient oh. earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerubians who are borrowing up from the depths. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as a, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support oh, you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Himself. Yo, this guy throws out potions. This is like Deckard Kane and Hots. Elf as, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. That's cool. And you'll venture in and have Wait, a go back. He's bigger than the undead. Wait, what are we talking about? Who's bigger than the undead? Oh, Un in, in that shot where they're looting the box? You're going to no, 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 no. The undead was like... Friend Brand Bronzebeard. Bronze was on the platform of this. So he looks taller. And he's a little bit closer. It's the angle. Overrun I mean, dwarves are thick, though. Who are borrowing up from the depths. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as a Actually, he's a little bit bigger. I think he's a little bit... He's fucking mad. Look, he's bigger than a gorilla. I guess he's a baby gorilla. He's big! What the fuck? Tier one or tier <laughs> he two is definitely a little bit bigger. Kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier two is for those who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Oh. Uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as okay. part of the end game and seasonal progression and we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset really all through alpha on this new system on you know how it is or isn't working for you and whether we can you know really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want a casual romp as an extension okay. of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome um feedback is going to really okay. help shape like how this evolves but we're challenges. so excited about delves as a central part of war within yeah, I'm excited that we're gonna be able to just jump in and get our, like go Gabby, solo thank you for the with Bran, or you can have friends, but also just get rewards in that way, especially the tier sets with the catalyst, exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delves end game. As you hit max level, as you hit 80, and start to get a sense of the Delves ecosystem, right at the start of that, we're going to give you this epic customizable mount. Oh, kind of the, the what? Successor to the customizable Dude, that looks Drake cool. In Dragon Eye. That's cool. Miles, where you'll be able to, through doing Delves, oh, what the? a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can mix Damn. and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. So does this mechanical mount have... Dude, I think I played too much fucking classic while wow, everything looks good in that game. Everything looks good in retail chat. I think I played too much classic wow. <laughs> This is what I've been looking at. Look at my fucking weapon. What the fuck is this? <laughs> It's like a lamp I fucking took out in a Hawaii post. Dynamic flying. This is one of the big questions we had moving on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, That's dragon cool. riding is amazing. Mm -hmm. We're in, we can't get rid of this. Mm -mm. But how is this going to work alongside of the Still hunt? better? Bro, dude, you are like 40 years old for sure if you think that's cooler than what we're looking at right now. There's no way. Hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections. And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote unquote static flight? Holy uh, fortunately, our team yo! Was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Yeah, we were very excited like to be able to make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So even Nimron's head, Ian, we figured it out. <laughs> we made it work. So I'm really excited to see Nimron's head going like super fast. What? <laughs> Another feature coming in the that weapon that sick. I'm really excited about, as well as a That's lot of other sick. people, is warbands. Yeah, warbands. I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm -hmm. almost everything. Uh, it this you know players increasingly play multiple characters and this is something we've heard loud and clear that you know the yeah. game needs to be more alt friendly the players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across the i was so happy when they made reputation from characters instead of them okay, have well, to reprogress everything individually yeah they needed this so long ago and so yeah the war band watch watch i know i i know i've been playing classic well for a long time and classic community they're gonna be like no, you need to do wars on goals and get exalted with Silverwing on every single fucking character and waste your fucking life in that. Listen, man, I've done this shit so many fucking times. You don't, you don't understand, man. This reputation grind, 
I've done it so much. This exalted thing. Do you know how many classic characters I played? I don't want to do this on every single character. Are you crazy out of your mind, man? Listen, I did everything. I did rank point. I did everything possible. I, I know it, okay? That rep grind shit is disgusting. It is just, it is your account. Potty mouth, you're right. This is McConnell's fault. I need to stop cursing. I've been cursing way too much after I talked with them. It is your collection of champions, whether they're Horde or Alliance, regardless of what realm they're on, they're all part of the same warband, which gives access to various shared progression systems. That year is pretty. To see all of your favorites. Yo, took them long enough, but they finally added it. I know Vindictus had this first. Lawstock has a screen like this too, where you get to lo this is your login screen, you choose your character right here. Dude, I love this kind of stuff on uh you know one screen together so uh, in our new ui we'll have warbands and you'll i gotta say i don't think this is finished because there's no shadow like the camp is here like the shadow should go yeah this isn't finished i feel like they should have finished and presented because it doesn't look that great like you know move four up into that space and see them all hanging out around a campfire is that on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select I screen. I love the new character. Yeah, character. Totally yeah I like different it though. Than what we're used to logging in. Exactly. Yes, you'll you'll know. Like this is a completely different world. It's a completely different welcome into World of Warcraft. Okay. Um, what we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock-up, but we're excited to see people react to the real thing. And really, as with everything else, you know, warbands are a foundation. They're, this is a system that we want to build the next generations of World of Warcraft on. You know, in two thousand four. WoW launched with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't wait to hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. And that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. You can't okay. forget about PvP. Let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. wow. You guys are going to talk about PvP? This is the hardest thing to fix in World of Warcraft. Hardest thing to fix. Hardest thing to fix. I think Battleground players are dead. World PvP players are dead. It's just arena players that exist. And the mindset that arena players have is crazy. It's fun, but these guys are like next level. I don't know how they're going to fix it. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, so we have a new battleground called the Deep Hall. This one is earthen themed. It's a bit okay. Of a it looks cool. Between uh, Silver Shard Mines and Arathi Basin. Check, can I go on a big tangent? So you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one. Yeah, and in terms of how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated. Dude, this is gonna be wasted. I I'm just saying it right now. This is gonna be wasted. Because they're going to balance the game around Arena. I'm going to talk to you guys like you guys are toddlers, okay? I've been in the PP scene for two decades, okay? Very long time of my life. They only give rewards in Arena. So nobody plays RBG or World PvP. It's dead. And then they balance the game around Arena. So the game doesn't end fast. Because if the game ends fast and BlizzCon it looks bad, they don't want game send like super fast right they want the healers to heal run around the pillar 10 minute matches five minute matches maybe even 15 or 20 if it goes long and that style of design in a bg where healers are unkillable that shit just doesn't work man i i, I want i want to have fun queue a normal battleground and play and i'm fighting this priest like this priest and i'm out playing him stunning him on cooldown kicking him every time and he just doesn't die he doesn't die man that's crazy i know i sound crazy and most of my viewers right now are classic wild players but if there's any p peers in here you guys know what i'm talking about you guys know in a battleground this healer starts penicing me i'm like okay you want to fight boom boom i run up pop my wing blasting him he just pops ps barrier and then i kick him stun him he doesn't die we're fighting for like two minute three minutes straight and then all his homies pull up and i die it's like dude healers are unkillable and wow it's disgusting i think they just need to get rid of that system ah uh, that i can't i can't i can't uh, there's mimi i need help i need help i need help man i, I just don't play pvp anymore i don't play pvp anymore
It only works in arena. It's fun in arena, but in battlegrounds or world PvP, <sighs> healers don't die, man. But then they make it where they don't die. So that healers stay playing healers. Because if they get trained and die, they go on the forum saying, man, healers are so boring. I just get trained and I die. And then there's no healers in World of Warcraft. Man. All right, sorry. A mashup between a Silver Shard Mines and a Rathy Basin. So, you know, hold some... Fix PvP. The only way they can fix PvP, chat. The only way. This is the hard reality, the hard truth, okay? The hard truth. But it doesn't matter because 3v3 Arena is the same people that are playing all the time. There's barely any new player. It's the same guys on the rank one page. Same guys, chat. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. It's the same people on the ladder. <laughs> the tournament players, they're the same fucking guys you see every BlizzCon. It doesn't change. It doesn't bring in new players, man. They need to just be like, all right, guys. I, I can't say it. Arena players are going to hate me, man. I like Arena. I like Arena, but dude, Arena, bye-bye. It's, no, it's not working. It's not working. We, they've been holding on to this so fucking long. It's time to end it. Just fucking scrap it, man. I mean, okay, keep it, but don't make it the main focus. Don't make it the main focus, guys. It's so... Uh, <sighs> this is not it. This is not it, guys. This is not it. This is not it, chat. It's not it. Do you guys understand where I'm coming from or do I need to explain? Like, are, are we on the same page yet? Dude, I'm talking way too much in this video. <laughs> Is there anyone confused? What are they replacing Arena with? I want them to not focus on Arena. I don't want them to focus on Arena. I want them to focus on RBG 66. And then we can play in these crazy fun maps and have fun. It's just more fun for the viewers too because you see like carts and the carts need to go there. Any any 40 year old man can be like, oh, okay, they, the cart needs to go there or the flag needs to be captured and put there instead of six guys running around the pillar when they're about to die, they just go <laughs> just like Yes, it's fun. Like, you get to sap, shadow step, chief shot, boom, 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 kidney shot the other guy, blind, come back. Like, it's cool, like, grappling hook. But it's just, it's fun when you're playing it. It's not fun when you're watching it. Like, I want them to realize that. I, I guess it's fun if you understand the game. But for the average Joe that doesn't play WoW, it's not. And I know people might be like, oh, what, what matters, blah, blah, blah. But you got to understand, like, PvP grows if there's more audience that watch. And if it's more fun to watch, it grows more. But WoW Arena, I don't think there's, like, a lot of new eyes on it. It's just the same old people watching it. Maybe a little couple, couple new eyes, okay? Couple new eyes. I think this would bring more attractiveness. And people will like it more. I mean, fuck it. Maybe it could be even 5v5 BGs. But you got to design it where things can die. Things can die. And it's more fun to watch that. Like, you're, you're, you're watching a battleground and this team just gets wrecked. But they regroup and they have a new strat and come back and fight. And the game's not over because there's like a score system, right? Rather than just running around pillars all the time. Sorry points push some carts uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one yeah and in terms of how players are interacting with it um there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with war within uh people who've been paying attention over the course of dragonflight have checked out our uh battleground blitz our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated battleground format we're happy to move Whoa, 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 Ian, what are you cooking? Whoa, 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 whoa. what did I just hear? Out our uh, Battleground Blitz, our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated Battleground Okay, I like this concept, but hear me out, chat. If they still balance the game around Arena and only give cool mounts in Arena, the RPG scene is dead. It's, the, it's worse than Arena. It's the same guys, but it's the same like 10 guys, okay? It's insane. 
Um, there's no cool rewards in RBG. You just get a title. That's it. You don't get a cool mount like Arena. All the focus is on Arena. The esports whole thing is on Arena. If they go with the same concept of healers not dying and then bring in 8v8 Arena, 8v8 Battlegrounds, it's going to be so boring. I've talked to this with Soda and he agreed with me too. This is Gilnea's chat. Lighthouse, mine, sorry, my cat was in front of me, and water works, right? BG starts, Horde caps this, Alliance caps this. We got a few floaters defending, maybe rogues trying to like ninja cap and whatnot. The main fights in water work, right? <sighs> Until the game ends, this cannot be captured. It's crazy. It's crazy. They just fight, 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 fight. Nothing dies, nothing dies, nothing dies, nothing dies, nothing dies. Because like two healers are here. I mean, it's just so different, guys. It's so different. It's, it's, I'm going to go crazy talking about it. I talked about this with Soda. He says the same thing. Yep, you're not wrong. RBG chat. Remember when I said I couldn't kill a priest? It's the same thing with three healers. And nothing fucking dies! It's terrible design! They can't design the game around 3v3. It, it, they have to change well, it, man. We're happy to move to that as a default for how rated Battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think we're really excited to make that Battleground experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP. That larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based, um, you know... You CC, what's the problem? People will cry about everything. If we had the complexity of Miss of Pandaria CC, maybe we can line up a kill. But nowadays, it's just CCs are shorter and mo most of them are on DRs. And I get it. If you play a game and you're CC'd all day long, it's fucking boring. That's why I like Plunderstorm, man. Plunderstorm had short CC durations. There's outplay potential. You could teleport or ferry out like... The X and Y is added up in uh, Plunder. I like that a lot. But in Retail WoW, it's just... Hmm. They, they gotta change the concept. Uh, they can't be going arena direction, in my opinion. Collaborative, competitive setting as opposed to the deathmatch style. In no, here's the thing, chat. <sighs> the, the, this won't happen, though. I just don't like the uh, concept of WoW healers. As I played a lot of MMOs... I wish there. I guess this priests are like that. I mean, there's min maxers who knows how to like DPS and heal at the same time. But I, I kind of wish. What's the best way I can say it, man? <sighs> kind of like rep paladins, I guess. It's like supportive healer. It's like you do support and you do damage. You're not just a heal bot. It's like when you watch Overwatch. What's more impressive? Do you like watching Mercy healing or Ana healing? Anna's fucking badass. She aims, puts people to sleep on reactionary. Where where Mercy is just like Shing. That's fucking it, right? I mean, they're good. Like good players will go pistol boom 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 and go ching boom 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 But I, I want more of a support role that does damage instead of being a heal bot, is what I'm trying to say. Arena. So, to make that more accessible to everyone who, you know, loves battlegrounds, loves PvP. Um, we know, we so know that way they have fun, and if they outplay, they could kill a DPS too. It's just not unending healer versus DPS battle. I like the idea of support class that they can do more than just heal. Yeah, like give them CC. They have like AOE short absorbent, but it's not like crazy power scaled. I want them to like, I want things to die. I think that's why Classic WoW is fun because. Things actually go oom and they die. It doesn't last forever. That's why healers and wow should become support. That's what I want. But it, it, we go back to me saying this is never going to happen because we have PvP and I mean PvE raids like they want a heal bot, right? But I wish they changed that system. The, I promise you guys, chat. Lost Ark raid was awesome I, I know the pay to win shit is weird but raid was fun and they don't really have healer healer it, it's more of a support a bit overdue honestly us mm -hmm. adding a new battleground map into the rotation 
and we're excited to do more of this going forward we're excited uh, anyway dude, i'm not like bashing or anything i i think this is super cool i love it graphic looks amazing concept looks amazing they have the right idea in mind they're trying to make new battlegrounds i, I like it a new i like it a lot make battlegrounds i think this is awesome to the end game rewarding part of pvp and yeah this is just you know the beginning of a new chapter Another feature in The War Within is Hero Talents. We've been having a lot of articles talking about them. What are some of the other things that we can expect with the Hero Talents coming forward? Well, I can say there's going to be no more blogs and articles releasing Hero Talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play. And I think that's, you know, the, mo the most exciting thing. We're so grateful to the community for all of the feedback and discussion in recent months, going back to the first blog in December. This really helped us shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going I like to see that idea, hero Father Pain. That you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously, and for many of the ones that we have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback, uh, Ooh, by what we heard loud and clear in some cool. cases about what was and wasn't exciting. Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero talent trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just dialing Ooh, it all I in. I like that hat, but look again, Chad. The hat wearers, they go bald when they wear hats, Blizzard. Come on, guys. So what are we doing with professions in The War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhaul professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift. That was just a regular effect. paladin? Trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about... I like how Warlock's got this crazy demon um, that comes out of a portal case. starts smacking you. And Paladin, well, not they just show Wake of Ash. Alpha, and then the rest with Shield of Vengeance on. Of the journey is going to be about iteration, <laughs> tuning, and really just dialing it all in to make the polished experience that everyone's excited about. Whoa, that, that looks cool, man. So what are we doing with professions in The War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhaul professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. So you can expect, you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically don't, NPC don't even suck comics. Uh, so it could be you know Earthen in Isle of Dorn who need a hammer made or need a helmet made and they're constantly putting their offer their work orders up onto them onto the market so that there's always something for you to grab the player ones will still be more lucrative but there should always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up you just want to practice your trade skill and there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins the ability to have quests that now can point you towards that system because we can count on it always being there so with Dragonflight and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with The War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvement that we want to make over time. Okay. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One of the new ones that you'll okay, see I is don't mind one it. that's like we consider an important one. These aren't campaign, oh. but they're pretty important to your character. For so as a long time WoW player, you might be like, ah, oh, this is weak sauce. We should be able to like find it and do it. For new players that come in, it's hard to distinguish. So I think these are cool. Instance. Uh, that must do ones for your profession or ones where you're gonna unlock the revival okay so purple catalyst. are important yeah, quests as we've leaned more and more into outdoor world gameplay and varied gameplay there are different types of dude exactly comment I, I went back on retail recently and i was like damn i want a bg but i want to do some quests before so maybe i have some gear to catch up and <laughs> i know if you open map there's that exclamation mark thing and you go do that but dude i had like 10 million different one of those and i'm yeah public events over the course of dragonflight honestly we reached a point about halfway through dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different icons that were there and it was just a kind of icon soup situation that made us say like it's kind of at this point we've advanced far past the world of oh you just have some daily quests or world quests here we need a clearer visual language and so really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do 
in WoW on a given day. So that covers the War Within, and the alpha is starting extremely soon. Pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak. As we speak. If you solo shuffle BG, you get scaled, so you can just log in and play. Okay, if we're scaled, are we up to par with the normal players? Or if this guy still has arena gear, he's going to be like a tiny bit stronger. I feel like they're going to have that tiny edge, right? So you do want to play still. Sit here right they're, now. they're definitely getting better the at that though. The way this is going to work is pretty similar to the Dragonflight Alpha for those who, who followed that. We're really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player feedback and our attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're going to start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is going to be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like hero talents. With six Blizz has been getting better. Uh, either they're trying to impress Microsoft or Microsoft gave them a bunch of money to work on all of these, man. They're, they're, they're going ham on it. Because I remember in BlizzCon, they announced that three expansion, Season of Discovery, Plunderstorm, Kata, Mob Remix. Dude, they're doing so much content for the players. I like it. It's a good time to be a WoW player, I think. Way better than before. Builds. We'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within. I'm inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder to do so. Um, we, you know, really pick from. Really, true, there's Stop no. Stop being like that. Trust the. No, no, no. I, I'm a fan of it. I like it. I, when Blizzard got shat on, and their scandals and whatnot, it was an awful time. I mean, they did deserve the backlash. You should never be doing that kind of stuff. But after that incident, I, I feel like they've been going back up. I think they're doing good. And if they're doing good, you should let them know. No secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks Wait in. Wait till Paladin is really shit again. I think I played this game long enough to... I mean, I do meme about it. Like, it's fun to meme about it with the boys in the chat when your class sucks, you know? But I think I'm old enough to know, like, if Paladin is not good anymore, you know, you just make an alt. And boom! Oh, shit, and you're fucking popping off, man. Uh, Stoops always said the thing, if you want to have fun in any game, just play the most OP class and every new expansion, every new patch, that man would re-roll. He would go Demon Hunter, Windwalker Monk, Warrior. He just re-rolled anything that's good in that patch, he would just play and he would be having the most fun time of his life. But if you're playing the bottom class and you stick with that every patch, you're going to have a miserable time. So if you want to have fun in the game chat, I know some of you guys like to play that class representation, kind of like me. But if you don't have fun, just, just play the OP class, man. You're going to have fun. You're going to have so much fun. How do you not have fun? You're just destroying everyone. And hope to get, by the end of this, countless people into our testing. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase, which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within from 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout, you know, feedback, bug reports, suggestions, all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year. Thank you so much for joining me for The War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Oh, you know, this is one of the most exciting times. Thank you. Oh, they look at that. Oh, thank you guys. Holy moly. Welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha. Can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out. Yo, the there's Pillow. So Everyone's been looking for Pillow. Make your video explaining where. <laughs> yeah, this man needs to tell his fans where he's at. <laughs>